right now on Five on Your Side at 10. Celebrating America's birthday, St. Louisans meet a scaled down fair. Thunderstorm chances increase later Wednesday. Why a few of us may see another round of gusty winds. Walking into tragedy. We weren't going to wait around, stack the line. We need to go in and see if we can save these kids' life. Tonight, an emotional St. Anne police chief sharing new details of the murders of a mother and her two children at the hands of her boyfriend. But first tonight, we continue to follow breaking news out of Jennings. That's where an hours long police standoff is still going on. Good evening. I'm Brent Solomon. Mike and Ann have the night off. Family friends tell us it all started with a deadly shooting at a 4th of July cookout. Our Robert Townsend has been near the scene on Jindale Court all night. He joins us now with the very latest. Robert. Hey there, Brent. You know, right now it is very loud out here in this Jenny's neighborhood on this 4th of July night. People are illegally setting off all kinds of fireworks all around me, but that's not the reason why we are here. Take a look right here and you can see these bright red and blue lights flashing on these St. Louis County police cars. For nearly six hours now, more than a dozen police officers have been out here in this neighborhood near Jendale Court and Cousins Avenue. Now, police say just after four this afternoon, a shots fired call went out. Officers got here, immediately put up yellow crime scene tape and blocked off the street that ends in a cul-de-sac. Now, investigators tell me they soon learned that a man shot two people outside on the street, then ran inside his home, where again, he has been holed up for nearly six hours. SWAT team members you see are also here at this scene. A neighbor is sharing this video with five years side this evening. Now, another woman, Rhonda Walton, says her 32-year-old daughter's father lives on Jandale Court. Walton tells me her daughter and other relatives were at her ex-husband's home for 4th of July celebration when the suspect, quote, approached them and repeatedly fired shots at them for no apparent reason. Walton says the suspect lives across the street from her ex-husband. She also says the suspect first shot her daughter's stepmom in her arm and then shot her daughter's cousin's boyfriend in his chest, killing him. Right now at this hour, we are still waiting for police to confirm Walton's claims. It's very upsetting because they won't let me talk to my daughter, and I just need to be able to make sure she's okay and her dad. Like, these are all my relatives. And back here live at this scene in this Jenny's neighborhood, you can see the standoff is still going on, and police tell me they are still trying to convince the suspect to come out peacefully. Of course, we're following this, and we'll have much more as it rolls on. Live in Jenny's, I'm Robert Townsend. Five on your side. All right, Robert, we know you'll keep us posted. Let's take a live look now at downtown St. Louis. That's where the Fair St. Louis fireworks spectacular is well underway. A hot and humid 4th of July today, and tomorrow, Mother Nature could provide Provide some fireworks of her own. That's why weather first chief meteorologist Scott Connell is calling for a weather alert day. That's right. For tomorrow, Brent, it is a weather alert day. It's going to be hot. It's going to be steamy. Similar to today, where the heat index could top out around 100 degrees during the afternoon hours. But we also have the chance for thunderstorms that could be a bit on the strong side, at least in some spots. There's a look over downtown St. Louis as you're looking back from Forest Park towards the city. We had some scattered thunderstorms this afternoon into this evening. What was left that last one just dying out before it can get to Park Hills. But you folks down south of St. Louis did get some decent rain today. We're tracking those storms across Iowa, southeastern portions of Nebraska into northwest Missouri and into northern. Kansas. That area falls apart, but that was the leading edge of what we'll deal with as we head into tomorrow. Warm and muggy overnight, hot, humid with that storm chance tomorrow. And again, it's kind of a combination of the heat, humidity, and an approaching cold front with some energy with it. That means the potential for a few strong thunderstorms with wind being the main threat tomorrow. We'll get into the timing on it more in just a few minutes, Brent. All right, Scott, thanks. Remember, you can get your weather first forecast any time of day. If you Text the word weather to 314-425-5355. We'll send it to your phone. Back out live to downtown St. Louis now for the fireworks spectacular. It's part of this year's scaled down version of Fair St. Louis. Laura Bacheski found people still excited to celebrate the fourth downtown. She's live with a pretty good vantage point for the fireworks show. Hey there, Laura. 
great view, Brent. And today, Fair St. Louis was really limited to two events, which was America's birthday parade and the spectacular fireworks over the arch, which got a bit of a late start today. And a lot of people I talked to, they're honestly hoping for more from Fair St. Louis next year. For many St. Louisans, the 4th of July always starts with America's birthday parade. It's a family tradition. We came out to um, support the local St. Louis community, to support um, everyone in the parade, and to make sure to educate him and understand the significance of the birthday of America. But this year, the family tradition changed. For many, after the parade, the streets weren't bustling with the sounds of Fair St. Louis like they were last year. It was a little bit of a bummer. It was. Last year, it was awesome. To to uh, get to experience that, get our kids out there, have some fun, eat some corn dogs, all that good stuff. So definitely a little, little smaller this year, but we adjust, right? So the Estes family adjusted, spending time together at Ballpark Village, which filled the live music hole Fair St. Louis left behind. That was DJ Deb's favorite part of Fair St. Louis. We had, you know, some of the top entertainers. I got to meet them, talk to them, see them in the limo, see them to go to the hotel they were at. And so music is number one with me. While it wasn't what they were expecting, the change didn't stop them from getting to the heart of their family tradition. Spending time. It's our annual mother-daughter trip. We can't, well, we, so it's just spending time with each other. One of the things that stayed the same <laughs> is the 3,600-pound fireworks show, which for kids young and old is the best part. We park at the top of a parking garage. We're right there at the top. About 9 o'clock, we go, wind down, get our spot set, and just kick off the, the fourth the right way and check them right over the arch. And what will never change is the reason we celebrate. People take their freedom for granted until you get locked up in a prison cell or a jail cell or like you're a little bird. Would that be fine or would you rather fly free? I like flying free. So freedom means everything to me. Fair St. Louis says the reason they scale back this year is to make it bigger and better for next year with community collaboration. I hope you have a happy 4th of July. Reporting live from downtown St. Louis, Laura Barcheski, five on your side. And the same to you, Laura. Right now, many of you are hearing fireworks and neighbors are setting off. You can see some of them being set off from our roof cam. Remember, it is illegal to set off fireworks in St. Louis City and County, as well as in St. Peter's and in Illinois. You can have fireworks in Franklin, Jefferson and St. Charles counties, but those come with restrictions. Tonight, we're learning more about a tragic shooting in St. Anne. A woman and two of her children are dead. Police say that the mother's boyfriend killed them. Investigators say the couple was arguing at the home on Jane Avenue before the shooting. The St. Anne police chief and an officer found the mother dead in the garage. Her 14-year-old son's body was in the kitchen next to the boyfriend, who was still alive at the time, from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. An emotional St. Anne police chief describing what he saw next. In, in the living room, there was a five-year-old juvenile with a gunshot. Uh, to her head. She had a pulse, so another officer and I, um, he picked the child up. We rushed her out to the ambulance. Sadly, that five-year-old girl later died. A nine-year-old girl who ran for help is recovering tonight after being shot in the hand. 34-year-old Coleman Milkelvane also died at the hospital. We found he had a long record with kidnapping, assault, and DWI charges. Tonight, the Major K Squad investigating the shooting death of a 10 year old boy in the Metro East. Someone shot him as he was standing outside his home last night on Roosevelt Avenue in Belleville. Anyone with information should contact the Major K Squad at 618 825 5200. Two high profile Illinois Republicans will face off in a primary race for Congress next March. For tonight's announcement, Mark Maxwell traveled to the town of Xenia, which is about two hours east of St. Louis. The fight for Southern Illinois kicked off as a slugfest right out of the starting blocks. Five term Congressman Mike Boss will face a primary challenge from Darren Bailey. My fellow patriots. Roughly 300 supporters showed up on Independence Day to hear Darren Bailey announce his political ambitions. For United States Congress. 
Bailey framed himself as an outsider, challenging DC insiders who cozy up to lobbyists in the swamp. We must fight back and reject the weak need politicians who refuse to stand up and fight. Mike Bost is a Marine veteran. Do you really think he has weak knees? I, I commend uh, Mr. Boss for his service, and I thank anyone who serves in our military. But sometimes then coming in and, and filling a role in government as a representative, I think is uh, two completely different things. The Boss campaign called it a shame that Darren Bailey is willing to divide conservatives. But that wasn't selling on the farm. Well, Darren is the conservative. He's proven that time and time again. Uh, Mike Bost, uh, from what I've seen, votes with the Democrats about half the time, and we don't like that. Team Bost said Bailey is putting selfish opportunism and personal ambition ahead of the interests of Southern Illinois conservatives. I guess I'm I'm sorry that he chose to uh, uh, to start this kind of rhetoric this early. We're going to find out if Southern Illinois thinks Mike Bost has been fighting for them hard enough. How do you like your congressman? Uh, Bost? I have known the man for years. I've lived in Southern Illinois my whole life. He's a, he's a good man. He's a good man. He's not a, he's not a bad man. I believe in Darren Bailey and I will be voting for Darren Bailey. Reporting in Xenia, Mark Maxwell, Five on Your Side. Tonight, a shocking discovery in the West Wing. The mystery powder causing a lockdown, now the center of a drug investigation. From Independence Day sales to Amazon Prime Day, we're breaking down the best days for the best buys in July. The July heat continues on Wednesday, and there's a little better shot at more of us seeing some afternoon storms. A few of them may have strong winds. We're timing out storms for tomorrow and looking ahead toward more unsettled weather for the weekend. We're learning more tonight about a deadly mass shooting on the streets of Philadelphia, leaving five people dead and two children hurt. Police say the shooter was wearing body armor and walked several blocks with an AR-15 style weapon, shooting people at random. That suspect is in custody. On a day of celebration, people in Highland Park, Illinois, are marking a somber anniversary. Today marked one year since a gunman opened fire during a 4th of July parade in the Chicago suburb, killing seven people, injuring dozens others. After this morning's remembrance service, there was a community walk down the parade route. They were joined by dignitaries like Senator Dick Durbin. I've done a lot of things on the 4th of July. I don't think I've ever done one uh, an event as memorable as this one. This community was coming together with a range of emotions from pain to anger, containing it to march down the street and reclaim that street for the people of Highland Park and the families who are affected by this. People in Highland Park also coming together for a community picnic and a concert. Tonight, President Joe Biden and First Lady Joe Biden celebrating the 4th of July with their family. They watched the Capitol fireworks from the White House balcony. Earlier today, they hosted military families for a 4th of July barbecue on the South Lawn. It really matters you showing your support for the military on a day like today. You know, it's an incredible opportunity we have. And we are, we are, we are the leading nation in the world. The president is calling on all Americans to rededicate themselves to the central work of democracy. Tonight, the Secret Service is investigating who left a small bag of cocaine in the west wing of the White House. The white powdery substance led to a lockdown last night. A field test showed it was cocaine, but further testing is being done now. The president was at Camp David at the time. Tonight on this Independence Day, a federal court ruling on protecting free speech. A federal judge issued a preliminary injunction today restricting members of the Biden administration and federal agencies from contacting social media companies about taking down certain content. This stems from a lawsuit filed by former Missouri Attorney General, now U.S. Senator Eric Schmidt. Well, July brings us Independence Day sales and Amazon Prime Day. Tonight, Consumer Reports tracking the prices of you need to know exactly when there's top tested products with discounts. Here's Mike Bush. Fourth of July sales are in full swing. This is an especially major sales moment for big ticket items like grills, large appliances and mattresses. Now might be the time to make that change your body needs. A recommended mattress from Consumer Reports tests. The Casper Original Hybrid Queen is now on sale for $1,196 at Amazon, Best Buy and Casper. 
CR says this hybrid of inner springs and foam delivers excellent spine support for sleepers of all sizes. Now save big on a new washing machine. This washing machine from Electrolux is as low as $8.98 at the Home Depot. CR says this model aced its test for washing performance and water efficiency. Keep the cookouts coming this month with a new charcoal grill. This charcoal barrel grill from Char Griller is now as low as $6.99 at Lowe's. This grill is Wi-Fi enabled and has a hopper feed system for adding more charcoal. It also aced CR's tests. And if you're planning a family trip this summer, you can save on a travel stroller. This Chico lightweight stroller is as low as $87.99 at Amazon and Walmart. CR says the stroller is compact, easy to fold, and maneuvers well for its small size, even on rough terrain. And if those sales weren't enough, get ready for Amazon Prime Day coming later this month. Amazon's annual Prime Day sale is happening this July 11th and 12th. Basically, everything is going to be on sale, but the discounts are exclusively available to Prime members. So you'll need an account to shop the sale. Also, look out for competing sales at other retailers like Target and Walmart around the same time. Mike Bush, 5 on your side. And Consumer Reports will have updates on all these special summer savings events throughout the month. Tonight, Ammer and crews are making progress restoring power on both sides of the river. Right now, about 16,000 customers in Missouri are still in the dark. Now, that number is down by 14,000 customers less than five hours ago. About 2,200 Ammer and Illinois customers are still affected by those outages. The power has been out since Saturday storms. Ammer and hopes to restore all service by tomorrow night. And we all know it was some serious storms that moved through our area that prompted those outages. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell joining us now. So glad we're in the clear of that, Scott. Yeah, at least tonight, pretty quiet. Most of the day tomorrow is quiet, but tomorrow afternoon, another weather alert day because we could have a few more stronger storms. Just don't expect it to be as widespread as far as the severe weather potential tomorrow. There's a look on Main Street in downtown St. Charles right now. Weather cameras around the area, well, they've been showing partly cloudy skies, but this is showing you back up on the traffic is everybody in downtown St. Charles there on Main Street kind of making it back from Frontier Park and heading home after Riverfest and the fireworks tonight. 85 degrees currently in St. Louis feels like it's 89 2.70. That's muggy. You can feel at 96 for the high this afternoon and that heat index was right around 100 in that territory again tomorrow. So make sure you're staying hydrated. Temperatures don't drop all that much tonight in the mid 70s in town. Outlying areas will be down into the 60s. Heaviest rain today was across our southern counties and again it was not all that widespread. One cell to the north of St. Louis produced some large hail this evening and then it died. This is the line of thunderstorms out to our north and west. This is the area we're monitoring tonight, but it should weaken and tend to fall apart as we head towards daybreak, but it does leave a boundary and that boundary will interact with the cold front that's working in tomorrow and the fact that our temperatures will be back into the low to mid 90s, plus it's muggy. Yes, some of the ingredients are there. Not all of them seeming to come together for widespread severe weather, but some are there. So the slight risk does still include much of the St. Louis area. Storm Prediction Center will take a look at the new information that's coming in now, digest that, and a little after one in the morning, they'll put out the update for tomorrow's severe weather threat. May shift that severe threat a little south and east of St. Louis. That's where we're thinking the greatest threat would be. And again, we're talking about scattered thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon. Not a solid line of storms, but they'll be scattered around some of them with downpours, some of them capable of producing some gusty winds. That means we could see additional power outages in a few places, but again, we're not expecting the widespread through the metro area kind of wind storm that we had on Saturday. Now, as we go into tomorrow night, things settle down. Most of Thursday's partly cloudy with any rain farther to the south of St. Louis. We're in the 80s on Thursday, then we're shifting into the weekend. This weekend, pretty good chances for showers and thunderstorms on Saturday, though it's most likely not an all day rain. That chance is definitely there all day on Saturday and a good chance lingering into Sunday. Will there be severe weather over the weekend? Well, it's a little too early to classify it as a weather alert day, but we'll be monitoring that situation. There's certainly an opportunity, but tomorrow is a weather alert day as temperatures go back into the low and mid 90s. We'll be tracking some spot 
scattered thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. And again, your main threat, Brent, is going to be gusty winds and downpours with those storms. And at least now we know we've been warned. Mm -hmm. Scott, thank you much. Well, Frank is off tonight, but no worries. Corey Miller is standing by with sports. Yeah, Brent, we're going to hear from Adam Wainwright and Oliver Marmol after another bad day leads to an IL stint. The Blues' top draft pick is continuing to make highlights. And I've got some 4th of July throwback video you absolutely have to see. Stick around. Sports is up next. The Sports Desk is sponsored by Jim Butler Chevrolet, the Midwest's number one Chevy dealer, 10 years running. him a glare say take a little whip of that big boy give it to him big boy give it to him that was july 4th 2003 my favorite mike shannon call of all time there will be no classic cardinals calls this holiday though they continued to sink deeper into the depths of the national league today in miami it was another rough day for Adam Wainwright. He gave up this monster blast to Jesus Sanchez in the first inning. One of seven total and four earned runs against Wayno today. Get this, opponents are hitting 354 against the Cardinals in the first inning this year. That's the worst in baseball. Jesus Lozardo was great on the other side. Six shutout innings. Marlins win 15-2 and Wayno is headed to the IL. Here's how Adam and Ollie summed up another disappointing day. When you play golf. Sometimes you look at the hole, and the hole's really small. You know, that's kind of what strike zone looks like to me right now. So I need to get, I need to get physically right so I can be mentally right. Not ideal uh, for him or for us, and was able to talk through it with him. And um, there's just not a whole lot behind it at the moment. I think more than anything, it's just dealing with some, some, uh, some shoulder stuff that we're going to look at, and we'll just we'll just see what the doctor has to say and and uh plan is to come back strong I mean, listen I, i'm either going to come back and pitch great or i'll be a great cheerleader you know so um but uh, the plan is the first one you know for the plan is i'm not giving up a little similar i mean if you really think about albert in the first half similar conversations where you're sitting there and you're having some really good heart to hearts figuring out what's next and um we know how that ended over on the ice at Centene, the new guy has been lighting it up at Blues Prospect Camp. This year's number 10 overall pick, Dalibor Dvorsky, has been notching highlight reel goal after highlight reel goal. It will likely be a couple of years till he makes it to the big club, but he's made a good first impression. Very good, very competitive. Uh, he's a pr competitive person, very humble, curious, wants to learn. and. Um, Really strong. I'm impressed with the strength on the stick, like in puck battles and stuff. And the man, the myth, the legend made his annual July 4th return at Coney Island today. The Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest was almost canceled because of the rain, but Joey Chestnut wasn't going to have that. Once the eaters did get going, Chestnut blew everybody away once again. He ate 62 hot dogs and buns in 10 minutes to win his 16th mustard belt. He hasn't lost this event since 2015. Every 4th of July, I like to look back on this story. It's 1986 and Michael Jordan, Dominique Wilkins, and other big basketball stars are playing an Independence Day pickup game under the arch. It really happened and we have the video to prove it. Imagine seeing the greatest of all time just casually dropping insane moves under the iconic gateway arch. I mean, look at this crazy hang time move. Uh, MJ is going to pull up here in just a second. Our Art Holiday was there back in 86 and asked the legends about their acrobatic skills and to remember back to their first dunk. A lot of guys who can leap, but there are some guys who just can, you know, jump out of the gym. I was in the ninth grade. Uh, I didn't know I really dunked the ball. I, I went up with the intentions of dunking it, but you know I was so happy that I did it that I didn't know I was doing it. You don't see wow. stuff like that anymore, Brent. All those people there back in 86, yeah. they got a memory for a lifetime. And how cool that our own Art Holiday was right there, too. He was a referee for that game, actually, and he said there's no way he was going to call a foul on Michael Jordan. <laughs> you can't do that. No, no way. way. Don't do that. <laughs> Corey, thank you much. Well, still ahead, Rolling on the River, the fireworks tribute tonight in New York for a St. Louis star.
A special tribute tonight in New York City for the Queen of Rock and Roll. A portion of the Macy's 4th of July fireworks spectacular honored Tina Turner. Thousands of golden hue shells cascaded over a mile-long stretch of the East River. Turner, who started her professional career in St. Louis, died back in May at the age of 83. Taylor Swift is getting a big welcome to Kansas City. A large piece of crop art was created in the likeness of the pop star. She will perform Friday and Saturday night at Arrowhead Stadium. And that's all of our time for Five on Your Side at 10. We have The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon coming up next. Always remember, you can start your day with Today in St. Louis beginning at 4 in the morning. We hope you have a great night.